welcome to the Zadzooks Happy Hour, a podcast providing commentary on the latest in film, TV, games, and comics. My name is Todd Stoll, and I'm joined by 25-year veteran reporter covering pop culture, video games, and technology for the Washington Times, Joseph Zadkowski. What now? Come on. It's really nice. We've, we've it's got... easier to do this. It is. And every time I walk down here, you don't have a gas leak, do you? No. Because my, bri- my brain just goes blank. Well, that's okay. It deflates. It's, uh... Couldn't even think of Melissa McCarthy 10 seconds ago. Did I say her name right? M- McCarthy. McCarthy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of that... <laughs> Speaking of nothing. So, okay. Well, wait a minute. Saturday Night Live. Yeah. There was a big build-up for the Sal Baldwin show. Yeah, it, it was, was terrible. It was terrible. It was fake comedy. Um, I was also expecting Rosie O'Donnell was going to come out as Bannon. Right. And that didn't happen. So the next chance is is March 2nd, 3rd, whatever that Saturday right. is. Oh, he'll be gone by then. You think so? <laughs> Bannon? <laughs> I don't know. Well, let's just... I mean, today... You know, marks a, a huge milestone in that Trump is already out uh, for his reelection campaign. And really? Yeah. He's got the uh, he's website camp- built. Yeah, he's campaigning right now. It was in Florida. Yeah, uh, South Carolina. South Carolina. Stopping there first. So that's big. All right. We we don't get political here. We don't. It's just, but 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 we can we can talk about something that has somewhat of a political tone in the sense that you mean war? Yeah, war is. So, That's a nice transition. Thanks, man. I'm trying really hard. You're getting hard good here. at this. Thank you. So you, I keep trying to take you off topic, but go ahead. So how about that Batman movie? Is that? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Which one? The Justice League? No, no. The Lego Batman movie. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, I've heard good stuff. Yeah, I might. Take I've been. My, pl- I've been playing the game. I know you have. I need to tell you about that. I know you have. Upcoming. Okay. Get, maybe at the end of this show. Okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna talk about a a non Lego movie. We're gonna talk Hacksaw Ridge. Right, which is in the running for best picture, um, uh, from uh, director slash actor slash occasionally crazy person Mel Gibson making his comeback, making his comeback, and and what a hell of a comeback it was. Yes, uh, Hacksaw Ridge has stars Andrew Garfield as Desmond Doss, who is a Seventh Day Adventist uh, individual, conscientious objector, who joins the fight in World War II but refuses to carry a weapon into battle. Right. He is a medic. He is a medic. And in this film, you also have Vince Vaughn, who plays his drill sergeant, Sergeant Howell. Who does a great job. Uh, is Yeah. This is this is the role and the, the kind of acting you hoped that you would have seen in True Detective. See, I was gonna just going to say that. Yeah. I did not watch the second yeah. season because everyone kept telling me how horrendous it was. It was just not good. He great. wasn't good, huh? He was fine, but this, this was awesome. Okay. Um, Sam Worthington, who you might remember as the Terminator in the, oh. the last Terminator movie. Um, plays He's much better here. Plays the captain of the platoon, Captain Glover. Yep. Um, you also have um, relative newcomer uh, Luke Braley, I think is his name, and he plays Smitty Riker, and he has a pretty cool role uh, in. The, or I'm sorry, Luke Bracy, uh, who has a really cool role uh, role in this film uh, as sort of the antagonist of Desmond Doss and eventually ally and friend. Right. Um, Huge props to Hugo Weaving. Agent Smith. Agent Smith. Also from Lord of the Rings. Yes, I um, loved him. He plays... Elfin uh, Elder. He plays Doss's father and is amazing in the role. Yes. Very, very good. Um, and then uh, uh, event, uh, love interest, eventual wife, uh, Teresa Palmer, who has been in um, a bunch of movies. <laughs> that I just I no see it's a okay. gas leak down War, here I'm so, telling you so warm bodies I don't know if you ever saw that one that was the one where they're all zombies and eventually they find love and they be, they come back and they're no longer zombies they're living right um, you see Night of the Living Dead yeah. Night of the Living Dead I mean Talking Dead not Talking Dead Walking The Walking Dead? Dead no no I'm behind you didn't miss anything I'm behind what episode are they on now seven yeah so I'm behind six episodes <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> go ahead <laughs> it's okay um, so yeah, at any, at any point, the, you know, we're, if you look this battle up, this is, this is real. This is based on a true story. Yes. Um, uh, this, battle of Okinawa, the battle of Okinawa on uh, hacksaw Ridge, which the, um, how they actually film this is very cool. Um, you know, essentially they have to ascend a rope ladder to the top and then try to 
push their way through. Um, and so the reason that this story covers this one individual is because he was the first conscientious objector to not only fight in a war without a weapon, as far as I can tell, the only person who fought in World War II without brandishing a weapon. He also uh, was the first conscientious objector to win the Medal of Honor. Yep. Um, and he was... Um, and how did he win that? He saved... He saved 75... 75 guys 75 people injured. by himself after, after a full-blown retreat of his entire platoon off of the ridge when they were bombarded by a huge wave of Japanese fighters. Who were entrenched in tunnels, coming uh, out all over like ants. It was unbelievable it was, to watch. Yeah. Uh, he stayed behind, and slowly but surely over... They don't really give a time period, but over hours and hours he kept going around finding injured people figured out a way to lower them down to a watch group below who you know eventually started picking these people yeah, up right so um the movie itself ends with the words and some uh video of the actual desmond doss which and is fantastic it's so cool um he talks about uh the you know Andrew Garfield kept saying as he's you know collecting these men and lowering them just one more please just one more just help me with one more he's praying and then they cut to it at the end and the real Desmond Doss is saying well that's the only way I could keep going is I just kept praying and I just would go back out I mean this right. guy you know collapsed by the end of it because he's so exhausted and then there's a scene that you you didn't think anything of it in the film there's a guy who says he's blind and you know Garfield's character uh, pours water on his face and washes away the blood and the dirt and the guy says I can see right and then he talks about that in the end of the film about how if he didn't save anyone else that moment for him was was enough to make what he had done worthwhile right so it was very cool to see that uh, that Gibson sort of really carried these real life events as closely as possible for um, you know just in general a really good story and keeping it realistic and keeping it true and making it a, based on a true story. Yeah, and it was a it was a project that nobody wanted. Yeah, it's if you if you watch the featurettes, I mean, it took like 10 years or longer to get a studio interested. Yeah, it's crazy. Which is, it's, which is absurd yeah. because it couldn't be a more gut-wrenching and heartwarming experience to watch this and there you know, there's a there's a fair amount of blood and gore. Um, but there, it's, there but it's is, not, but it's not, um, oh, come on. There is a 10 minute battle scene, but, but it's, that is but it's better than saving private Ryan. Yeah. If you but, could say better about human carnage, but, but, but it's not, they're not, they're not doing it to bring the gore factor out. No, it's very realistic. It's very lifelike. I mean, as soon as they go up on the ridge the first time, because so many people have already been killed, there's rats around, and, right. you know, it seems very realistic for the circumstances that these men had to face, and then, you know, just the loss of life, and, I mean, the pyrotechnics alone on this thing put, you know, these guys had plenty of work to do. They were gainfully employed the entire time. Right, right. Um, The special effects on this were truly just phenomenal. Um, a lot of blood packets, I'm sure, and and just a lot of small explosives and everywhere. It looks unbelievable in 4K. It, it's it's an upscale from the 2K Master, but wow! But even in non 4K, it's amazing. It look great. I mean, it looks great. This is a movie that honestly you would buy, put on your shelf, and go back to this every so often. It's such a good war movie. Yep. Um, you know. Say what you want about Mel Gibson. He can put together a fine piece of material. Right. And he has done so here. And Andrew Garfield, who most people know as Spider-Man version 2. Um, Does a great job. Just crushes it in this movie all around. I, mean, I wouldn't have expected it. No. And, I mean, again, Vince Vaughn, right? I mean, he's yeah, I, so Yeah, no way good. I would have expected that. So the end... So Mel gets the best out of these people. And I have to say, I think the most... Um, the, the 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 most sort of heartwarming experience was after he's lowered down, you know he basically is a, he's about to be killed as he's coming off the ridge right they finally get him lowered down and he stands there and all of the men are just standing yeah. alongside of him and they're just bewildered by this guy right no one has any idea that he was the only one up there by himself for maybe a day right um and that was pretty cool to watch and you have to assume that again, this is all coming from 
interviewing this guy years before and having right. all this footage. Fairly real. Unfortunately, real. Gibson couldn't go to him for source material because he passed away right. in 2006. Right. Um, so, but... I give this uh, very high marks. There is a reason why this is in the in the running for the Oscar. It should be. I mean, honestly, I think if you were to take this against La La, La Land, Land, oh, I would, oh I, and you know who's going to win. Of course you do. This movie deserves the Oscar, hands right. down. Gibson deserves it for director. This deserves it for best picture. Garfield should have got it for best actor. It was truly... Just for the fact that I don't think, I think very few people heard of this guy. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. It's, it's 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 a superhero movie at points it's when you tr- watch this. It's truly like you just think that they're taking creative liberty and then he's like, oh, you know what? No, no. I'm gonna shove this in your face and I'm gonna put him on the screen at the end. Right. And he's gonna back up what I just put on the screen in front of you. Right. And you're like, that's unbelievable. You know, and you have Worthington's character, his name is Captain Glover, who tries to court martial him because he refuses to carry a weapon, and then they, they actually get the real life guy years later. And he's and he's he's sitting and he's crying. He's like, right. I can't believe I almost threw him out. He's by far the most honorable soldier I've ever met in my life, and I and I feel horrible, and I can't believe he forgave me right. for trying to throw him out of the military. I mean, it's just all around the coolest thing ever. It um, just makes you think about what these old timers had to do. It's it's totally not in today's a world warfare. war yeah. like that. Yeah, it will never be like that again. No, no. I mean. A lot of, lot of hand grenades. Um, Vince Vaughn's character has Close this, quarters combat. Uh, they, yeah, they're using the... Um, bayonets. The bayonets. I mean, you're talking hand-to-hand combat. Um, Vaughn's character is interesting. The weapon that he brandishes, which is like a kind of a half machine gun. Yeah. It's like, a, like maybe the first iteration of what today's machine gun is and that's very interesting because most of these guys they've got rifles and right. that's it rifles and bayonets and maybe a handgun right um and and a lot of uh, hand grenades um but that's it i mean this is close quarters this is in the mud this is explosions this is war reenacted to its finest and this deserves probably and it, yep. more and i say i say it's better than private ryan because the Japanese soldiers never quit. No, they're, they're relentless. Ever. And and, that's, and even when they surrendered, they didn't surrender. Yeah. And you'll, and, you'll see that. And if you go back and you read about the actual story of this, you realize just how relentless it was. And, and actually, um, they point out that he took more, uh, he was injured more. Four times. Four times. More than what they show on so the, in film. the film. Because Mel didn't think people would believe it. Yeah. <laughs> He t- he, t- is, he took a. Um, he actually he said he climbed off a stretcher at one point to give a man a stretcher. Yeah. After being injured, he he took one to the helmet, which they do show. But yeah. but apparently he took another one to the helmet. Yeah. Um. He was um blown up by a grenade, uh, kicking it football style, which yeah. is a crazy thing. Yes, right. he fell off a stretcher and gave it to somebody else. I mean, this guy was he's the real deal. He's 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 the true American hero. And um, you get an hour 10 documentary on the making of the movie, yep. which is really pretty interesting. Yep. And you get two versions of Mel. You get the clean shaven Mel. Yes. And the very, and you get the it's a very grizzled Mel. Slightly, uh, yeah. Yeah. Crazy eyed Mel uh, with the beard. I mean, the did you go through the commentary of it? There wasn't a commentary. Well, I mean, just b- between he and, and Garfield sort of talking about, like, making the movie. I mean, it was a part of that yeah, hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, oh, yeah, yeah. That was, that was great. Very interesting. Um, I didn't didn't need to see the deleted scenes, honestly. There was nothing there. There was that, nothing there. That, I mean, if, if they put it in, fine. If they hadn't, this was a masterpiece just as it is. Right. So this is a movie you need to go buy. You need to put on your shelf. You need to revisit it at least once a year. Put it on on Memorial Day. Put it on on Veterans right. Day. This is show it to early younger generations. This is this is what World War II was, and this was the kind of people who were out there, and these are the people who never really got their their due when they got home. That's right. And so I cannot highly recommend this movie enough. It's very strange coming from me as you know Mel Gibson film. He's kind of a weirdo sometimes, but the guy is an artist, and he can put together one one fine movie. Yes. Thank you. Anything else you want to say about this that hasn't already been said? No, it's real. 
my dad fought in World War II in the Italian campaign and some very bad stuff happened to him. It's real. And you watch this movie and I really, I cried at points. I have to wonder rough. If, if they showed this to any surviving World War II vets. Yeah, I don't know. And got their reaction to this. That, that would have been one thing if, yeah. if they could have done that and put it on the extras just to get the point of view from, right. from, um, from these, you know, retired vets. Right. What what would their reaction be? Most of these be? guys won't talk about this no. stuff. My dad wouldn't. He gave me very little. I had to get it out of his sister. Yeah. So this yeah. is an amazing film. It's very good. It's just so well done. So on that note, uh, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk uh, DC Universe original movie, Justice League Dark. Oh. So stick around. Oh. Communities Digital News, built by the writers and editors that deliver the news 24 hours a day. Visit comdiginews.com. That's C O M M D I G I news.com. And support the next evolution in news. Let's get, wow, let's, that took longer than usual. I know. Let's get into DC Universe's original movie, Justice League Dark. This is like the 500th <laughs> animated film from DC. Still trying to get it right. The interesting part about this movie is it's rated. R. R. Yep. There's only one other R DC Universe movie, and it was the not very good Killing Joke. Yeah, I wasn't really... I mean, there's some language in it, but I wasn't really clear... There is no reason for this to be in R. No. There's it, a few skewering of the torsos by villains with large swords. Yeah, but it says, like, R for some disturbing violence. Isn't that more PG-13? Yes. PG, PG? Yes, you're right. Um, you're right. Okay, so, having not really watched a lot of these things, I'm going to give you the one question that I had in this. Okay. Um, they call this a Justice League movie, okay? And yes. And you see the Justice League for maybe about... Mm, minutes? Seven minutes out of the... 97 minutes? 97 minute runtime. Um, and then... 75 minutes, sorry. Okay. Well... So Batman's roaming around with basically everyone else who can wield magic. and That's right. He doesn't really need to be there. No, he just grunts a lot. A lot of grunting. Has some... Rolls his eyes occasionally, which you can't really see, which you, you know he's doing yeah, it. You yeah. know he's doing it. Um, but So that was a little weird. I don't know why they called this a Justice League movie. Because it was based on a comic book. Okay. That was called Justice League. Okay. Um, Constantine who originally was played by Keanu Reeves ages ago in a right. film, but more recently was a television incarnation. Matt Ryan. Uh, with Matt Ryan. He reprises, at least voice-wise, uh, yes. his character. And he does a great job. He's very good. He's very good. Um, I'm a little behind on the house, so I, I don't really... The mystery house? Yeah. The house of mystery? Yeah. I don't know a lot about Constantine. I was yeah. more of a preacher kind of guy. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I, that, I, I just was sort of like, all right, there's apparently, he's he's kind of like Doctor Who, right? Doctor Who has a TARDIS. Apparently he has, he has a house. He has a house that floats around. Yeah, floats That's around. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> and pretty, he smokes cigarettes. Maybe the and, smoking the cigarettes was the R. And they both have British accents. And so they both have British Maybe there should be a crossover there. Who knows? I think they can do that in the Lego universe. Easily. Easily. <laughs> that may be a new a phone call Lego needs, Dimensions pack. A phone call needs to be made. Right. Constantine and Doctor and Who. Doctor Who. Yep. Um, this was a B-rated movie, in my opinion. B-rated? Yeah, okay. There's three pieces when I look at these animated movies. The three things, I, I'll go through them with you. Oh, so we can talk about it. Believe me, you, are, you are the expert three. here. I've watched way too many of these things. First of all, the story. What would you think of the story? It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. What uh, about the hospital scene? <laughs> um, are you referring to the super baddie floating around? The 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 evil uh, turd. The, yeah, the that, turd that takes a life on it. It's a monstrous turd. It's a monstrous turd that no one can defeat. Right. That that <laughs> Batman tries using defibrillators to take it out. I think that's a first. Oh, the, <laughs> that whole thing, there were many first. Right. I don't believe I've ever seen a superhero movie where Pooh comes to life <laughs> and starts just attacking everyone. Besides that, 
you know, I th- I thought there was a lot of good things going on in the movie. Yeah, the story had it made sense. I I it's within I, reason. I did like the introduction of the characters, and they did play the that swamp out. swamp thing. Swamp thing was great. I forget the, the dead man, the, the floating ghost guy, Boston Brand, who's uh, really cool. Yeah, the 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 whole the explanation of these characters. For me, not knowing a lot about them, there was at least a backstory that they filled in quite nicely. So yep. I could kind of figure out, okay, why are these people here? Right. Um, they had a clear mission. They did. There was a problem. They knew that humanity thought it was seeing demons. Yes. And kind of killing each other in the process. Mm-hmm. So that's step one. I like the story. So number two, what about the voice cast? Did you enjoy them? Did you oh, enjoy yeah. listening to them? Yeah. They were enthusiastic. Very. I thought they delivered. Matt Ryan was fantastic, but he already knew the character. I mean, Jason yeah. O'Mara as Bruce Wayne. He's been in these before, so he already knew the game. And he grunts a lot. He grunts a lot. Big deal. I thought Zatanna, uh, Camille uh, Luddington, Nicholas Tortura, John's brother, was dead man. He, he brought a nice Brooklyn Bronx accent yeah. to the event. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jason Blood, Etrigan the Demon. I thought that was just a very cool character mm-hmm. who I, I enjoyed seeing on screen yep. and the rhyming of the demon when he it's very cool. So overall, so that's part two. Even Alfred Molina, who was Doc Ock in Spider Man, played a villain in this. Um, I don't want to give it away. And so that's that's two parts. The third part that I always am troubled by is the animation style. And this is where it does not deliver again for me. Yeah. It looks so normal. Yeah. Um, you know, and what does it for me is, you know, I, I went back and watched uh, this thing about the history of the Batmobile. Right. And you go back and you look at the, the comic book variants and you look at the animated variants and it becomes so just, I don't want to say unbelievable, but just so lazy in some ways like you look right. at these things and they're so rectangular and there's not a lot of detail and in animated films that's kind of what i'm looking for is i'm looking for a little bit more this is 75 minutes and it's r-rated there is no excuse not to take a chance here these characters are all paranormal based for the yep. most part yep. there is no reason you can't take a chance you can't do something different don't follow the mold give me some job Japanese anime, weird style. Give me something yeah. completely different that would shock me. Well, I think it's the it's Warner's animation group, right? I well, mean, yeah. Well, find another group. But that's take the, a look at Disney's shorts, short shorts collection. Oh, it's, and what they do. Yeah, hire one of those guys. But and I think do it. I think the thing is, is that these movies are template based, if you will. And it's like, we've already got the animation style down. We know how much right. it's going to cost. Cause they, so yeah, now we've got right. to pay for the talent. We've got to pay for the script. That's right. And we know we can get it down because we've already got an animation group and we're going to stick with it. So I think that's the, that's, that's where any animated film and especially DC fails. And it's a bummer because there's no reason for it no, to, no. they can pony up a little more cash here on some of these once in a while and make it better. Now, again, having not watched any animated DC, it kept my attention throughout. Right. I well, mean, if, but if you'd gone and seen four the four past ones, yeah. you would notice the similarity in the style. And you wouldn't be, I don't think you'd be happy with it. Okay. Now, what they do do really well in the Blu-ray, uh, direct to Blu-ray release, are the extras. Of Did course. you watch any of them? Uh, and if you didn't, that's okay. I'll go through a few of them. No. Okay. At least you're honest. The coolest one for me, because I'm like an old man comic book kind of guy, is they talk about the origins of Swamp Thing, which is really great because the co-creator, Len, Len Wein, is is talking most of the time, and a great artist named Kelly Jones is there talking about him, and the only guy missing is Bernie Wrightson, who I, I think has health issues and couldn't be part of the discussion, but it's great. Uh, it's 18 minutes. I could have used 48 minutes. I don't think Swamp Thing was on screen for 18 minutes, and he You're was right. cool. Yeah, I mean, That's I would have. I wanted more of him. It's a very cool character, and if you listen to that that featurette, you'll really enjoy it. 
because it's 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 great to see the roots of the character. No pun intended. Um, there's a uh, New York Comic Con panel where everyone's sitting there patting themselves on the back. So eh, you get to see the guys, you get to see the director. That's fine. The best part about this, though, is there's two episodes from one of my favorite cartoon series in the last decade, Batman, the Brave and the Bold. And the way they do this, this, this series, I don't know if you remember it. Mm-hmm. You pr- do you? Yeah. It's like the 1960s live action Batman show. Very stylistic. And man, they bring in everybody on these episodes. And it's freaking amazing. The two episodes are tied to um, uh, a villain called Gentleman Ghost, and there's tons of of appearances in these two 22 minute cartoons, and it's it shames the main event at points because it's so well done and it's witty and there's a lot of action going on. Yeah, so I, I love it. That's my favorite part of the entire package. So, so really, you would hold on to this, but only for the extras. That's that's true. That's okay. right. No, I mean, again, if it's your first forte into DC animation, it's not bad. Right. Um, if you're a seasoned veteran of this kind of animation, maybe pass. But it's rated R. Yeah. So the audience is limited. Well, the only thing that I can think of now going back to the rated R is that there is there's a scene in the very beginning... Where I'm, I'm not giving anything away. Right. Where someone mows down a bunch of people in okay, a car, and but then, it's not. And then a woman drops her baby off of a building because she thinks it's a demon, and then she kills herself. But again, you don't see it, right? And and the the animation style of mowing people over is also, and it could have easily been clipped to not make it an R. Yeah, I I I'm really confused when i looked at the back of this i mean yeah granted there's a little profanity in it but not a lot no um there's no nudity or anything like i can't figure out like what it is no that makes this no an R. bizarre sex scenes and, and less because it's an animated film because it has maybe because the um the riaa they uh not RIAA, um mc or er, MPAA, sorry, I think in the recording industry. <laughs> Let's go to movies. Um, maybe because it's animated, they feel like a kid would pick this up, right. and they have to be harsher with it. That's the only thing I can think of. Now, yeah, an example I'll give in the Killing Joke. God, I'm going to get this wrong. The Killing Joke's right, right? Isn't that the Brian Bolin? That's the one you reviewed not that long ago, so I would hope you remember. I it. told you it's a gas leak. I know you did. Um, I know you did. I mean, you know, it's fine. Did we talk about the fact that there was a scene where Batman was seduced by Batgirl? Yeah. Okay. That was just that's what that would give that an R because it was really Yeah, I mean, I don't uncomfortably I, I really don't know why this is an R. Okay. Uh, I mean, other than that there is some profanity, but it's even not really I don't think they ever dropped the F word. Nah, I don't think so either. Okay. So I mean, I don't know. Again, it's eh, a good B movie. It's definitely worth a rental, I think, if you're a big fan of the DC universe. Yeah. It's probably not worth a buy, but again, if you're a big, big fan, go and ahead If and you buy like it. Matt Ryan. Yeah. I mean, he was great. He did a good job. He was great. Having never watched Constantine, the TV show, he commanded yep. a, a good performance. So. Okay. All right. When we come back, what are we talking about? I'm going to uh, Batman movie Lego Dimensions, just a little bit. Okay. All right. We'll be back. <laughs> Communities Digital News, built by the writers and editors that deliver the news 24 hours a day. Visit comdiginews.com. That's C-O-M-M-D-I-G-I news.com. And support the next evolution in news. Don't have to say much at all. You don't, you don't have to say much at all. I'm we're, not. We're back. We're wrapping. Okay. I forgot to mention, since we were talking about Hacksaw Ridge and we were talking Mel Gibson, I right. wanted your thoughts on the fact that they are pursuing Mel Gibson to direct Suicide, Suicide Squad, Squad 2, 2. Which, of course, is a biographical <laughs> film of the DC Universe. So Something like that. That should be perfect for him. So, what do you think? Why would he do that? Uh, There's oh, no, no reason no. for him to do that. I know exactly why he would do it, because this happens all the time. In exchange for directing a flagship property, right. you have to give me money to fund the project I, I really want to do. Okay. What do you think he wants to do? Who knows? I, know. I mean... John the Baptist? Well, so... And I'm really curious with him. So, obviously, he did The Passion of the Christ. Right. And now Hacksaw Ridge, which is another 
you know, fairly religious movie. Is this his sort of niche genre? Or, yeah. Or I is don't know. He, or you know, does he branch out? Wait, didn't he do that one with the Aztec? Uh... I don't remember the name of it though. Yeah, but he did. Yeah, he did. Was based on ritual suicide, not which, ritual suicide, ritual killing, and which that is still you know a religious Native thing. Escapes. Yeah. Right. So it could be interesting. I uh, yeah. I mean, I keep thinking back to like his performance in Lethal Weapon, right? And he's kind of this crazy guy that's right. funny. Could he put something like that on screen? I mean, w- of course he could. If and, it was the Joker turning on the Suicide Squad, I mean, he's not even really part of the Suicide Squad right. yet. That could be fun. We'll it would see. be very interesting, right? Uh, so okay, all right. We, I forgot it was Valentine's Day. That was the wild card that propelled the film that was miserable to the top spot. It, it, no, it was not the top spot. Lego. Batman was number one at the box office. But we have to eat our words. Fifty Shades Darker, Darkest, Stop Making These movies is was number two. And it beat out John Wick, part chapter two. Easily. Easily. So I'm looking at the week, 10th to the 16th. Fifty Shades is even beating Batman by four million right now. Right. But that's going to stop. Right. Um... The the crazy thing is is that already for the projections coming in for the Great Wall, as of Friday it had six million, which put it in the third spot. But foreign, it's already at two hundred and seventy million dollars. It's those crazy Chinese people. I mean, the movie looks cool. Yeah, um, come on. I, is, I read it. Listen, I read a review is... that said it was really cool. And then I went and looked on Rotten Tomatoes, and you're like, no thumbs Garbage. down, terrible. I'll watch it on Blu-ray. Right. Um. It did. I don't know. Something about defending the Great Wall by like demons or right. whatever they are sounds like a cool premise. But then again, maybe everyone's not. hung up on walls right now, so it could be that. Well, I mean, how much did it make in Mexico? You know, uh, not a lot. Okay, I don't think so. Okay, didn't. Okay, you don't need to rim shot. Really? No. Oh, you just let it pass. I'm gonna. If cut, it doesn't I'm, work, I'll cut it out. If it doesn't work, we'll let the audience decide. Don't you think? They're they're, they're asleep by now. No. Well, yeah. If they can't hold thirty minutes, we're in big trouble. So okay, and then you you need to revisit your experience with Lego Dimensions again. Right. You have something it to say about that? It is by far my favorite game in the universe, and they they just released the story pack for the Batman movie, right? Okay. So that's pretty cool. So who's in it? So first of all, you get to build Batgirl okay. in the purple Yvonne Craig yep. costume. Yep. You get Robin with green goggles. Um, you get to build the Batwing. Okay. And you get to build the Bat computer. Here, take a look. You get to build all that stuff. And then you just place it on the... You place it on the portal, the toy pad portal. Do they all fit? And they all fit. And they do this, all fit on the portal. Yeah. This all lays there. Oh, because the portal is in the middle. Okay. portal's all on the outside here. Of course, okay. this is doing nothing for our listener. But anyway... If you Google Lego, Lego dimensions, dimensions... You'll see what we're talking about. The Batman Super Pack. Super Story Pack. pack. Story Pack. Uh, you'll see what we're talking about. And you get to basically play through the movie. It's six chapters. It'll take people about an hour per chapter. But see the movie first, and then play Lego Dimensions. Is it voiced by the cast? I don't think it is. Okay. But it's really close. They, Will Ar- It sounds like Will Arnett. Okay. It Mike, could Michael be, Sarah, it, maybe? It sounds like Sarah, but it's not him. Okay. Um, yeah. And it, I don't think it's Rosario Dawson as, the, um, as Batgirl. But I'll I'll touch on it next week. But other than to say, I'm in the midst of playing it right now, and it's really great. Okay. Are we good with that? I, I'm I'm fine with that. That's fine. It's fun. Okay. Is there anything else that we feel that we need to introduce our audience Let's see. to? Saturday Night Live went over that. Right, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Trump in Florida, we went over yeah, that. Well, right. yeah. Hexar Ridge. Went mm-hmm. on. No, I think we're done. Okay. And so nothing- and once again. Happy hour because it's only thirty minutes. Well, it's happy for you and I too because it's, it's only... <laughs> it doesn't take us that long right. to do this. That's right, and we can only really get to maybe three films in a week. That's right, and you if know. you can fix the gas leak, I'd be really happy. Uh, you know, just aren't they coming out this week? 
bring it. Yeah. That's okay. So some, something not related. Sewage. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. What would a gas company have to do with sewage? Oh wait, it's actually methane. It's actually this demon that's going to come out of my toilet. That's and right. Take over, and it's made of poop. And we're going to turn that into a DC and animated short. Constantine's going to show up. But the real I'll life... be animating it. Uh, really? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm going to find somebody to animate these damn things. I can think because I'm tired of these guys. Yeah, I can okay. think of a few. All right. Well, thank you for the rant. We at the end. so thank everyone. The two of you who are listening, including my son. Hey. <laughs> for some reason, are your sons listening yet? No, no. Will they ever? No. They, they've heard it off and on. Okay. They don't understand, and it, it. it scares them. I know. Well, you know, it's fine. So, okay. Well, Woo-hoo! well, I, I am still Todd Stowell, and I am also Todd Stowell this week. Really? Yes. Um, I'm taking a new name. Really? Well, <laughs> speechless, and don't rim shot me. I don't, I don't know what to say about Goodbye. that. Goodbye. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. <laughs>